Until quite recently, I have to confess I wasn't the world's greatest rail traveller. For me, going by train was seldom more than a narrow corridor in time, a passage of hours and nothing else. And that, I thought, was my fixed opinion on the subject. Nothing in the imagination can quite prepare you for the pure shock of India. The heat and humidity in Bombay rise with the sun and bring to their feet six million people drawn from all over the subcontinent. Their first ritual duty of the day is to bathe. Within the security of a luxury hotel, I do the same. Plucking up courage to take a journey on which, as it turns out, I will never see another European passenger. Up to this moment, all that I know of India has been got from books, novels, a schoolboy life of Clive, that sort of thing. The comforts of this hotel, the sense of safety and familiarity it gives me, are the indispensables of modern Indian tourism. But they're not the real bequest of British civilization. For very close to this spot, the first spike was driven on what was to become the greatest rail system in all Asia. And for Bombay, for all India, nothing was ever the same again. It makes the city, frankly, scary. 